I am back. Hey guys, so I'm um, looking through my notes for chapter four and I have down I wanted to talk to you about something called cognitive complexity. If you've never heard of that before, that exact well, that actual title, uh, you're like me. I want to tell you uh, a little bit about the story of when I heard that first because it'll describe what it is. I was at an academic conference. You have to sort of picture this with me. In an academic conference, there are a, a certain number of mandatory people in the room. There's the presenter of a paper. If you have a paper, you have to have someone to talk about it. There's the discussant for the paper. So after the person presents it at some point, someone's going to talk about it for each of the papers. In this case, there were, there were three papers being presented. So that's six people. And then there's a track chair. I don't know, that's the person who sort of organizes all this and says hello at the beginning and summarizes things at the end. So there's seven people who have to be there because they have a paper or a role in, in the paper presentations. And then there's audience members. And I went looking for one of the sessions to go in and learn something about. And I saw this cognitive complexity and I thought, well, I don't know anything. I have no idea what this is. So it was org behavior type stuff. So I went in and I noticed the whole time that everyone seemed to be like talking to me as they're presenting and all the discussants. They seem to be focusing on me a lot, which is a little uncomfortable because after all, I was the one person in the room who didn't write a paper or discuss or wasn't the track chair. I don't even know what this topic is. That they, I had to kind of, I was filling in and uh, learning as I went. Uh, it was a little uncomfortable. But cognitive complexity, I learned quite a bit in that 40 minute session. It's the ability of someone in an organization to navigate through complex thinking patterns, complex sets of data. It's the ability to weed through irrelevant as well as relevant information and push aside things that are irrelevant for the decision you're, that's being made. I mentioned early on in one of the videos that uh, most people in industry consider a senior as someone who has 20,000 hours and that equates to about 10 years of full-time work and there are 2,080 hours in a working year minus maybe a couple weeks on average of vacation time so 2,000 a year times 10 years. It takes 10 years to be a senior. Why do we care about how long it takes before we consider someone a senior? Well, one of the answers is because we recognize that in order for someone to handle really complex information and juggle it around and make good intuitive judgments about what is, how we should proceed best, what, what decision we should make, uh, requires cognitive complexity. Cognitive complexity, although they were trying to measure it, was really defined as a gut instinct. When someone has a high level of cognitive complexity, it was described to me as um, they just made good judgments in really complex environments. They were able to perceive, that's why it's in this chapter, why I'm talking about it here, they were able to perceive a very full, complex environment in the most simple ways. So when you ask someone who is uh, high in cognitive complexity. How do you decide what to do? It's so confusing. There's so many variables here. They'll say uh, they won't be able to tell you exactly how they do it. It's not that they lack confidence. They have high level of confidence. They'll just say, you know, I've seen so many circumstances similar to this. I've seen, I've made decisions so much like this, and this one falls into that category. Anytime I have to make a decision like this, here are the variables that I look at that I think are the most important. And I've made many decisions that were structurally like this decision, but different in a key way. So they're looking at the pattern of previous decision making and they're comparing what worked and what didn't. And over a long period of time, say 20,000 hours on the job, 10 years in, in, of industry experience, they get really good at it. When you ask them to kind of give you their magic potion. Tell me how you do it. I'll listen for hours and hours. Just help me. They can't really break it down because it comes down for them to something that feels kind of like just a gut instinct. But the reality is they're making good decisions more times than not because they're able to look at a complex environment and weed out the variables that don't make a difference and highlight information that to someone else might not seem that important that they see that as a trigger or a critical issue in the decision making process. So this really applies to decision making and lots of other different areas. I just bring it up here because fundamentally it's a process of perceiving and managing the perception of lots of information 
and identifying which pieces are important and which pieces aren't, what patterns exist in this circumstance that are similar to patterns I've experienced in the past, and what patterns are contrary to, that I've seen in decisions that didn't work, so we can avoid those, repeating those. All right, it's something that you can work on and develop over the long haul. It's not something that we develop early on. I don't know that it takes 10 years to develop it fully, uh, but it takes some time and effort. So the lesson for you and I probably is look hard at complex environments and make note of what the determining variables were, what factors played a role, what were significant and what weren't, so that you can uh, head in that direction to be a cognitively complex thinker and you can step into a room that would make other people's heads spin with information and critical and non-critical mixed in together and and just say I think you know this is what I would do and you're right more times than not it's an awesome thing to have for the organization it's an awesome thing to be as a worker